Hello. So uh, today we're going to talk about item characteristic curves. You may notice that I am not a Fitch today. That is correct. I will just play it by ear if I want to be an aquatic creature or a person. It's kind of nice having the choice. So yeah, let's let's dive in uh, and talk about item characteristic curves. All right. So. We can also kind of think about this as the uh, the preview for next unit, our item response for unit. So items for, but let's let's back up and then go in. So items for regression techniques have served as the basis for development of more sophisticated forms of item analysis. These are variously designated as a uh, item response theory, latent trade theory, item characteristic curve theory. And so that's where we're going. But I want to kind of give us some scaffolding so that I can bridge the gap and not just throw us straight into IRT. Because the, that would be a little much, personally, I think. All right, so here's, here's kind of the, the gap bridge. So we're going to look at item characteristic curves. So these are essentially plotting the relationship between individual items, so our individual questions, and our total score. So good items are monotonic. So here I've plotted the proportion of uh, correct versus the total score within that group. And we can see that when you're in a group that has a, well, poorer total score, you are less likely to get this item correct than someone who has a higher total score, which is good. Why is that good? It indicates that your test performs the same way by question. Uh, what we wouldn't want is someone more likely to get this question correct in that middle group than someone in the high group, because we want our test to measure performance. What do I mean by this? What would a bad one look like? This. This is bad. Not good, in other words. I know, very insightful. So this curve is non-monotonic. What is that? So monotonic, for those of you who, it's been a while since you took your calculus class. So that's essentially a steady increase or decrease. It just has a no fanciness, just a linear relationship that either goes up or down. This is not a linear relationship. We've got a sh we've got a curve where the group most likely to get this question correct is the group where there were total scores between 17 and 20, as opposed to the group where they're only about 50% of them got this corrected, the highest group. If this was a good item, we would expect this curve to be smooth, like it is in the one I just showed you. Here, it indicates that knowing less is beneficial. So having a worse score in the range of 13 to 16, on average, these folks got this question right 65% of the time. Versus knowing your shit, in theory, like the A quality work should indicate that you do well. I know I'm just circling around this, but this is important. Know how to read these curves. Hint, very unsubtle hint. Here's another one. This is even worse. Uh, here, uh, if you know nothing, yeah, your base rate is about, it's about chance level. But if you had a total score in the middle of the pack, you were, 90% of these folks got this question right. Well, if you did well on this club test, in general, you were predicted to not do well on this individual question. That's a problem. This is the kind of question that indicates a penalty for partial knowledge. So the people who have a soup, so say we have a multiple choice question, right? That has a really appealing foil that taps into kind of like a superficial understanding. Uh, people are more likely to pick that choice or, <laughs> either B 
because they have some knowledge and so they're being penalized, they're less likely to get it correct. Or they have zero knowledge and then it's just guessing while folks in the middle are more likely. This is just, sorry, I know I'm babbling. This is bad, very bad. You don't want this. Don't, okay? See, bad. Now, I've got a ton of these curves to just show you what they all look like. Uh, there are just all of them. So, or at least a solid chunk of the questions that I've shown you in tables, uh, for the most part, like they all show the same steady increase. There might be kind of steeper and more shallow. Uh, in general, that's fine. So if you have a question that, you know, maybe it levels off, so you don't get any benefit. Everybody in the like B and above range is gonna get the question right. That's fine. That's not a super difficult question. And so you have it maybe be concave. That's fine. Or even convex. So say it's got a pretty difficult question so that you need to have a lot of knowledge to be able to get there. That's fine too. The goal is to have it be that increases in the likelihood of getting the question right are associated with increases in total score. Curves are fine. What we don't want is something where you have an overlap, where you can draw a horizontal line and indicate that having more knowledge is, be is detrimental. Insightful. I know. I know I'm just saying bad over and over, but this is this is something you should be able to catch at a glance. When I am doing consulting work on uh and I have to evaluate like quality of measurement and things like that, I will just plot all these item characteristic curves. I'll automate the process and just look at them to see if there's anything amiss. Uh if any of them curve over, so if they have humps or like weird shapes, those are the first places I look. They're very diagnostic of bigger issues. So what I will do here is I'll probably have the uh, images out of sync with how I'm recording it and just have them kind of play slide by slide until I hit uh, the wrap up. I'm probably going to just have this run. Um, so feel free to, well, stop watching. There's not going to be any bonus content at the end. Uh, I did that once. It was nice to like see that y'all were actually watching for the most part. Um, but yeah, so I'll see y'all later. Uh, that was a quick tour in item characteristic curves. Bye!